Okay, Nikki Manage. <laughs> Nikki Manage has been. I think she was temporarily suspended. Nikki Minaj says she won't return to Twitter after claiming she was blocked over vaccine tweets. I thought she said that she got suspended over vaccine tweets. Okay. Oh, okay. R blocked by... Whatever. I don't care. I don't know. Nikki Manager. There's a lot of ads here. Holy moly. Wow. Incredible. Rapper Nikki Minaj says she won't be returning to Twitter after claiming the social media platform suspended her account following tweets she made about the COVID-19 vaccine. Minaj posted on her Instagram story that blah, 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 blah. That doesn't really matter. Listen. What really I blame them? Look at what they just did. I will never use Twitter again. If first of all, I didn't give any facts about any vaccine. I didn't give any facts about anything. Oh, it seems like she lied though, because she seems to be using Nick's Twitter again. I don't really know, but whatever. Anyway, that's not really important. The rhetoric isn't important. What's important is what she said, right? And that's what's important to see. Why? Why did she get pulled off of Twitter? Now here we go. It starts with, this is the tweet that people are pointing to, is not this tweet. People are pointing to uh, another tweet where she said something to the effect of, I guess I don't have it up anymore. She said something to originally to the effect of like, oh, I won't be attending the Met Gala, which by the way, just so you guys know, isn't a sports thing. I thought it was a sports thing. I don't have a father, so I wouldn't know that. Um... But she originally said the first tweet that she had said, and it's important to bring it up because people point to that tweet as like, oh, that's why she's banned. Like everything is so dishonest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the tweet that got her banned was this one, I believe. My cousin in Trinidad won't get the vaccine. Because she originally said, I'm not going to the Met Gala because I need to do research, et cetera, or something. I'm pretty sure if you go to, um, if you go to Hassan's Twitter, we'll do that. I'm pretty sure he responded to it. Um, it, let's hope that it's in the tweets and replies. I learned what tweets and replies are yesterday, or actually an hour ago. Uh, I think that she had said something to the effect, whatever. He responded with like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Sick of a ridiculous response. But, um, we're getting close. We're getting close here, because that's the Tucker Carlson thing. He responded with blah, 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 something that was like mocking her. It was kind of funny, honestly. Uh, he was like, I can't wait for your like your scientific contribution to the community. I'm pretty sure that's what he had said. It was kind of funny. Uh, anyway. But this is what I think got her taken down. Uh, my cousin in Trinidad won't get the vaccine because his friend got it and became impotent, which means he's shooting blanks. Uh, his testicles became swollen. His friend was weeks away from getting married. Now the girl called up the wedding. So just pray on it and make sure you're comfortable with your decision. Now, listen. I don't really, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> so she's claiming that somebody's balls exploded, basically. Uh, somebody got the vaccine and their testicles exploded. So I'm feeling like if if the claims of impotent and being impotent were true, why would you need the ball explosion? It seems like an emphatic lie. Apparently, the Trinidadian government even came out and said, uh, hey, this is false. Nobody had swollen testicles. Um, you know, maybe somebody made a joke about how maybe they have an STD. I don't really know. That's probably why she got taken down. Now, here's the thing. I see, you see that as a wind exploding ball. So fine. here's the thing. Um, obviously what she said was very ignorant because I just, there's no verifiable way that that's fucking true. I mean, Jesus Christ. She said that his balls, like his balls exploded. And then the, the broke off the marriage because he came impotent. Probably got stung by a bee. He probably did something with it. He probably did something. <laughs> if it's even true that his balls got big and blamed a vaccine, you know what I mean? He was like cheating on a girl. Yeah, he got like an STD and he's like, honey, I can explain. I got the COVID vaccine and my balls exploded. That's probably, <laughs> that's probably what happened. Um, here's my thing, though, is that I think that what the desired outcome here is to get people to take the vaccine as much as possible, right? I think that there are generally three groups of people, people who are for the vaccine, against the vaccine, and then there are the people in the middle. Those are the people we focus on more than anything else. When somebody that's hesitant, somebody in the middle, looks at something like this, what Nicki Minaj tweeted, it might push them more towards not wanting to get the vaccine, which means that this obviously is problematic. However, when you remove people for saying things like that, I think that people get pushed 
further towards uh, their skepticism of the vaccine. And so what I think would be more intelligent is to just put a label, and they might have used to do this, I don't really know, is to just put a label of like, this is COVID misinformation, it's completely unverifiable, maybe even make it so you have to, uh, there's like a, a warning that pops up over things with COVID misinformation, and then you click that and then it'll show the tweet. Because I do think that it could have the, un the, the unintentional impact of pushing people more towards vaccine skepticism when you try to suppress people talking about vaccines. So that's somebody said scared to get vaccinated, but her body has more operations than a math problem. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You guys are fucking too much, dude. <laughs> you guys are fucking out of fucking control, dude. Um, anyway, she went on Twitter to go on a fucking rampage. I can't. Okay. You can, oh, you can pause Twitter. Tw tweeters. Uh, this is Instagram. Sorry. Hey, 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 hey. I didn't say you to un tell you to unpause. Hey, hey. Oh, I have to hold it. Okay. I'm in Twitter jail, y'all. They didn't like what I was saying over there on that block, I guess. My poll was going to be asking questions is okay. I feel like fucking dumb. Then boom, can't tweet. Okay. Well, Nicki Minaj just giving the world, the whole world, the true embodiment of a free black woman in America. Many of you can not see it through it. You're... Cannot see it through your emotional blinders and a leash tied to one idea and generations of conditioning. Right is right regardless of who's saying it. Well, what the fuck are you talking about? She said somebody's balls exploded because they took the COVID vaccine. It's not even right. Also, I don't really think that we need to bring everything to fucking... To, why do we need to bring everything to race? Like, what is, Nicki Minaj's race has nothing to do with anything, right? Like, the, she just said something that was incorrect. Her being black has nothing to do with her incorrectness. Um, but okay. People are truly missing the point. Because, right, somebody said trying to silence her for talking about the virus. Now that's concerning. People are truly missing the point because they made this topic so sensational that people just immediately get emotional and can't think straight. They are silencing anybody that says anything other than get the shot. That's very scary. But they're not. They didn't. Oh, I just punched myself on my mic. <laughs> they're not doing that. They. The, she said that your balls will explode. <laughs> just that has to be factually incorrect. There's no way that is true. <laughs> like someone else's balls in America would have exploded. If this was true. Um, what does it say? Onika, you are right under attack because you're black and intelligent. When we are too educated and become a problem to society, may God watch over you and every step you take. I just, I find it annoying when it goes like both ways. When people bring identity politics into everything that's like not needed. You know, we have a conversation about vaccine mystery. Oh, it's because I'm black. I'm black, so they're silencing me. It's like, no, they're not silencing you because you're fucking black. What's insane is that she doesn't even, like, if... The internet world is very different from the not internet world. You have to understand this, okay? So in the real world, like, yeah, black people's voices may be suppressed, just generally speaking. That can be a reasonable argument. But we're in the online world where, like, you generally will have, well, I would say, you get a little bit more presence as a black person online. You get, you get to be a little bit more intense. I'm not trying to be all victim me, but it is, like, somewhat, it's more acceptable to be a little bit racist towards white people. I'm not being all like, woe is me. All I'm saying is that it's not the same. You're not in the same playing field. It's not the same. Like, it's there's not the same level of oppression. If anything, you get, like, praised. Um, so, like, you don't have the argument of they're just trying to suppress a black woman's voice. I just don't believe that. Like, you said somebody's balls are going to explode. That's what you said. Uh, you all got to stop pretending to love people with backbones. If Malcolm X were here, he'd be asking questions and most of y'all would holler Black Lives Matter and protect black women would be telling him to shut up and fall in line. You say these people's names would embody the spirit of a cat. What are you talking about, dude? I think that we need to keep reiterating that she said someone balls exploded from the COVID vaccine. What are you talking about? Um, if Nikki has... If Nikki has 5 billion fans, I'm one of them. If Nikki has 500 fans, I'm one of the five fans. I'm one of the one fan. I'm one of that person. If Nikki has no fans, I'm not alive. Okay, I don't care about that. All right, yeah, so Nikki had that meltdown. Uh, now, we got this whole, like, I don't know how Twitter works, but there was this whole, like, interaction between her and Hassan that was, like, really weird. Um, I think everything stemmed from this so Nicki Minaj is okay yeah it stemmed from this this is what I think it stemmed from because I'm so smart Nicki Minaj has been going uh, a little kooky um this is what she had posted
What if this tweet said, you know this? I'm getting tired of this argument because... How have you exhumed everybody in the Surrey Cemetery in the last year? Shut the fuck up. Who is we? We follow, uh, and following the we, we must never, is where you got me. Blocked for being a fake dumb page. What is this? Was that in reference to somebody saying that you're wrong? And they're like, have you exhumed everybody? Is that what she said? That's a dumb argument. Uh, anyway, let's start with the Tucker Carlson thing. So this is what she had posted. Oh, he's fine. Oh, he's fine. It's Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's testicles who are swollen from taking the vax. That's the claim. But it's not anything to do with the physical effect of the vaccine that makes our political class mad. It's the what? last part of Nicki Minaj's tweet that enrages them. The part where she says you should prey on it, make the decision yourself. Like, yeah, I believe that. Like, make the decision yourself. I would just urge you to get the vaccine. Like a free human being and, quote, don't be bullied. So our media and public health officials didn't like this because they make their livings bullying people. So they couldn't let it stand. I feel like what's, here's the thing. Because there's someone in my chat saying that like, oh, Papa, you're wrong. Nobody cares about the balls thing. Okay. You're wrong. <laughs> Listen, okay. Here's the thing. I don't care who's upset. The upsetting part doesn't bother me. The part that bothers me, it, or the part that's the focus, is why she got blocked temporarily from Twitter. She didn't get blocked for suggesting to people that they should make their own decisions. She got blocked for saying that a man's balls exploded. Hey, a, hey, a friend of my cousin's balls exploded. That's why she got blocked. No, they didn't get exploded. They, they blew up and he was impotent. That's the claim. But they didn't get blocked because they said that you can make the choice yourself. And in fact, I don't even believe that people are just going after her for saying that you don't have to get the vaccine or whatever. People are, I would, I'm arguing, like, people are, are going crazy over the balls thing. Like, come on. Um, blew up. Delicious succulent. I'm just telling you. You guys are getting a little too lost in the sauce. All right. <laughs> so, you could disagree with me. That's fine. I'm just telling you that there's absolutely no way that Twitter banned her for saying you should make your own choices about the COVID vaccine. It's much more likely that she told people someone's balls exploded and so they... <laughs> And so they're like, we got a banner. Again, my perspective is I think that they should have put like a trigger warning on there, an educational warning on the tweet that she had made, put like a box around it that says that's COVID misinformation. That would have been better because I think that would have provided more educational content uh, or a more educational perspective. I think that would have helped people who are on the fence of y'all getting the vaccine um, get pushed more towards getting the vaccine because you would have done something intelligent about it. I don't think it's good to suppress even dumb people's perspectives on the vaccine, but you should label them with like a trigger trigger warning. Trigger warning, get vaccinated. You know, I think that would have been more intelligent. If she made a wild claim that the vaccine gave her succulent breasts, Twitter and the vaccine uh, proponents would cheer her. We all know this. I just feel like, how do we verify that claim? <laughs> hey guys, I got the COVID vaccine and my tits were fucking 10 out of 10s. You should get them. I just, I don't know, man. Maybe you're right, but does that mean that you should be spreading misinformation about somebody's testicles going exploding? And then, like, do you think that because of that argument that justifies vaccine misinformation in another direction, like you're saying that I don't think we should promote vaccine misinformation in general, right? So we shouldn't say, "Hey, your bo your boobies will get nice and succulent." We shouldn't say, "Hey, you're going to become impotent, impotent." Is that how you say it? And maybe you're right. Maybe if somebody did lie and say that like a really positive thing happened, they wouldn't get punished. But that doesn't justify the other one lying. You know what I'm saying? You know, two wrongs don't make a right here. So I don't, I don't really subscribe to your argument. If the other thing was happening, I'm with you. You know, it's crazy. Anyway, Tucker, uh, excuse me, Hassamadi, <laughs> Hassan Abi, Hassan. I don't know. I'm white, so give me a break. Said, you know he's a white nationalist, right? And this is one of the... What the fuck is this? Okay. This is one of the things that really bothers me is that everybody's a fucking white nationalist. And we really need to stop. Everybody is a white nationalist. If, you're, if you don't agree, you're a white nationalist. I'm a white nationalist, probably. And he posted a video that was supposed to reinforce his point about something ignorant that Tucker Carlson had, Tucker Carlson had said which I'm going to try to find right now. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, blah, blah, blah. It's just all over the place. I don't know how Twitter works because I stink. 
he posted is this it i'm telling you tucker carlson oh it's he's just saying that alive he posted the video though he posted a video of like his proof I'm laughing this, because this i think i think this was it i think this was the proof yeah tucker carlson is not only vaccinated but doesn't like black and brown immigrants coming into the country this isn't about parties these are plenty of races okay so this is his proof that tucker carlson carlson is a white a white nationalist um I'm laughing because this is one of about 10 stories that I know you've covered um, where the government shows preference to people who have shown absolute contempt for our customs, our laws, our systems. I'm just going to make an assumption that this is about people coming here seeking asylum uh, and just coming over. Uh, I'm going to assume that this is like a bit old. ...itself, and they're being treated better than American citizens. TSA accepts alternative identification for immigrants flying from over the border. Okay, so alternative identification, I guess, is just like a more leeway for people coming over Listen, the border. Now, I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement. If you should That's a good question. Someone's like, does Tucker really think that her cousin's friend's balls had, like, got exploded? That's a good question. Somebody asked Tucker that question. I'd love to hear him answer that question. Just that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate the voters now casting ballots with new people more obedient voters from the third world but they become hysterical because that's that's what's happening actually let's just say it that's mm. true so i've heard this claim before there's some conservatives who think that um the reason the democrats want to let like immigrants in is because they want to change the vote the voting base so that they keep winning and i just feel like that's not true I just don't think that that's true. I, I, I think that there's a lot of people coming from like South and Central America that are coming here to seek asylum and, you know, maybe they want a better life, et cetera, et cetera. And they're empathetic to that. And I can respect that. I think we need strong borders and we can't just take everybody in. But I don't think that there's like this conspiracy to be like, oh, my God, they're just trying to change the voting base. I think that's ridiculous. There's also we Americans are snobby little fucks and a lot of people that come from south of the border. Uh, they're they're willing to come here and do jobs that other people aren't and support the economy and like low skilled labor jobs that most of us won't take because we'd rather go on to welfare um, because it's just more because we don't want to work hard and like these people will come over. Also, most immigrants are conservative. No, that's not necessarily true. Um, that's an interesting point. Okay, so a lot of conservative, a lot of Hispanic conservatives from Cuba are. I know what you're saying. Okay, so I used to work with a lot of um, Hispanic guys. A lot of guys from El Salvador. And what I do find interesting is something that I don't think the conservatives understand is that they actually are, they actually have similar values to with traditional American values. They're very religious. They believe in like the family unit. Uh, they work hard. They pick themselves, pull themselves up by their bootstraps. They're really mo like model Americans, honestly. Um, they tend to vote Democrat, but they're, I wouldn't call them like super progressive. They just don't, they're not really super conservative. They're more like midline. They tend to vote Democrat because there is more expressed racism in the Republican Party. I mean, that's just a reality. I think there's racism in both parties that expresses themselves different ways. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, Democrats are willing to help people, uh, help like, you know, Hispanics. What is that we call them? Hispanic people? More than Republicans are. It's just a reality. I just don't know what to tell you. Um, that's it. You know, but I, I, this conspiracy to me is unfounded. I, but I don't think that he's a white supremacist. I just think he's a fucking moron. That's what I think it is. Now, do I think that maybe he's worried that white people are disappearing? That's possible. That's possible. I could see that. Um, I don't think that makes him racist, though. I think that just makes him self-aware that, like, <laughs> you know, we could possibly get some backlash for no longer being the uh, predominant race. But hey, that's life, brother. I guess maybe we'll start paying for our ancestors. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really worried about it, though. Um, I'm not really worried. I don't really care as long as they are people with really like American values. Um, which, in my experience, again, like all Hispanic people I've ever met have like American values, like traditional families, etc. And I don't even believe in those as like core values. I believe in like working hard and earning your shit and not causing crime and whatnot. And that's what I've seen from the majority of Hispanic people, especially ones that I've worked with. So, if if look if maybe Tucker just needs to meet like a Hispanic person or something. I don't know, you know, <laughs> maybe just meet somebody. If this was happening in your house, if you were in sixth grade, for example, and without yeah. telling you, your kid, your parents adopted a bunch of new siblings. Wow. And gave they must them, have a lot of money. Them brand new bikes and let them stay up later and help them with their homework and gave them twice the allowance that they gave you. You would say to your sibling. <laughs> 
<laughs> such a bad argument. Okay, I'm laughing because this argument is really bad. So his argument is like, hey, let's say you were a kid with parents, and then your parents adopted other people, and they treated them uh, with more attention. I personally might be upset and offended, but if I retract myself from the conversation, that sounds like kind of what you should do. Because think about the whole framing. Hey, these kids were in a like, foster care system, probably because their parents didn't love them. And they're going to need additional help and focus and energy for them to succeed. So they're getting those tools. Um, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense when you, when you kind of think about it like that. Um, well, you know, I think we're being replaced. By I don't really think, I don't know if Tucker's really racist, but I see racist people who like him. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. By, by kids that our parents love more. And it would be kind of hard to argue against you because I just did, look at the evidence. Yeah. So right. this matters on a bunch of different levels, but on the most basic level, it's a voting rights question. In a democracy, one person equals one vote. If you change the population, you dilute the political power. <sighs> Dude, these are just such bad arguments because Tucker's like, in a democracy, one person equals one vote. Now, we, I don't think we're in a democracy. What do we mean, like a democratic Republican republic? <laughs> the problem I have with the one person equals one vote is that we know that we do electoral ballot and progressives are screaming, please make one person equal one vote. And conservatives are saying, no, we can't do that. We need state representation. So you get votes based on your state. So it's like proportionate. A constitutional republic, is that what it is? Okay, thank you. So Tucker making the point of like one person equals one vote, if you really believed that, then you would be an advocate for the abolishment of the electoral college but tucker isn't so like now we're just kind of being logically inconsistent here or of the people what's wrong with one person equal one's vote most people would say all right i'll give you the the, the i personally think we need to move to ranked choice whatever ranked voting in some capacity we're tired of having only two people on stage so the argument would be that uh every state is like a different sphere it's a different environment um, and so everybody, let's say in like the New York area, depending on where you're, you're at, would have a similar like perspective on things because they grew up in that environment. And so the idea is to give people that grew up in other environments who will generally be more like-minded the ability to vote. That's the fun. That's the idea of it. It's giving uh, representation to, uh, the, to local environments instead of individuals in those environments. It makes sense to a degree. I, I wouldn't like, I, you know. But uh, he said one person equals one vote, so you should abolish that by that logic. People who live there. So every time they import a new voter, I... Electoral college feels like affirmative action for states. Kind of, sure, yeah, that makes sense. I become disenfranchised as a mm. current voter. Doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so... I would say that, do you think that people who grew up in, like, New York would generally think this similarly? And do you think that people in Ohio would generally think similarly, right? And do you think that there's a lot of crossover? Not so much. Usually people in Ohio will think more like the people in Ohio. Um, there are different groups of people. I think that like you would have to go outside of your boundaries and understand that there are different groups of people in different areas. And the idea is to give the less represented group um, a little more power uh, so that they don't get completely overtaken. Especially since like, like places like New York, for instance, have the money to invest into like robust welfare programs to theoretically um, create a bunch of people Dependent on the system so that they could vote. This is like the line of logic of like the, the slippery slope kind of a thing. That's kind of the idea. Um, yeah. I know somebody said if we did one person, one vote, uh, California, Texas, Florida, New York would elect a president every year. Here's the thing. I, I know people like to say like, oh, if we did one person, one vote, conservatives wouldn't win anymore. I kind of feel like if we did one person, one, one vote, conservatives would be forced to actually change. I understand the idea of not wanting to move too fast, but I haven't seen like a reasonable perspective from like a conservative, even Donald Trump, like no offense, but his policies had no long term standing. Uh, we would have had to hit like six and a half percent, six point seven percent GDP just to make like break even on the massive amounts of like money that he the taxes that he cut. And we were nowhere near that much ever. There was never a projection that we were hitting six and a half percent. So it wasn't sustainable. I understand the fundamentals of trying to create jobs again through cutting taxes for the rich, but it just it would have been better to just give more money to the poor, and that would stimulate the economy much more. So <clears throat> it would be better, real. I mean, like honestly, 
it would just force conservatives to adapt to like what people really want in the United States. So I don't understand why we don't understand this. I mean, everyone wants to make a racial issue out of it. Ooh, the you know white replacement theory. No, no, no. This is a voting rights question. I have less political power because they're importing a brand new electorate. Why should I sit back and take that? The power that I have yeah. as an American guaranteed at birth is one. That's like, this is like, this guy's like your dad that's at the table and listens to you like rant about your day. And dad, I was at school and the guy picked up. Uh, yeah. Nope. That's, uh, that sucks, son. Yeah. One man, one vote. And they're diluting it. No, they're not allowed to do that. Why are we putting up with this? Yeah. All right. I don't think this is proof that uh, Tucker Carlson is a white nationalist. I think that Hassan. I'm laughing. Be I mean, like everything can't be white nationalism. And I, I do feel like there's an issue with leftists claiming everything is white nationalist. Everything is horrible and racist and it diminishes the word. Um, it's just stupid. I mean, I don't, I'm not a particular fan of Hassan, but you know, whatever. I guess this would be my message to, uh, to, to him. Whoa, I think he called me a racial slur. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs>